Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's get straight into the newspapers this morning and see what we can find. Um, uh, kicking off with the Punch newspapers, um, uh, the big one there you can see says, PDP and others carpet federal government as U.S. alleges massive graft in Buhari regime. Corruption pervasive in government, including judiciary and security agencies, says the United States. Rights abuses under Buhari government worse than under military dictatorship, says PDP. And also federal government and APC keep mum over report. Ooh. All right, still on the punch, federal government and telcos to meet over uh, court ruling on SIM blocking deadline. Service chiefs delaying defense vaccine supplementary spending, says the federal government. And also Senate demands 4.16 billion naira judgment uh, debt disbursements details. Not sure what that is about. Doctor strike begins. NARD meets National Assembly over unpaid allowances. And uh, Soludo's whereabouts unknown. There's a story that says that he was attacked yesterday and three policemen attached to him were killed. It says that Soludo's whereabouts unknown. Three policemen killed as gunmen attack summit. Uh, 30, 30 dead cows get mass burial. Undo health workers monitor markets. And also headsmen killings, assailants, flea boy. Vital clue found as the outrage trails attack. Uh, these are the big ones that I will be sharing this morning off the punch newspapers. On the Nigerian Tribune, Anambra 2021. Gunmen attack Saludo, kill three police aides, whisk away commissioner, bandits kill eight in renewed attacks in Kaduna. Three policemen killed, four others missing in Akwa bomb court war. Lecky claims soldiers killed protesters not verified. And that's a report from the United States. UCH patients grapple with water scarcity, reduction in surgeries. Affair on Thursday, kidnapping and closure of schools, surest bomb for the destruction of Nigeria. Navdak here saying can a strange illness caused by poisonous substances. I think that will be the second story in a few weeks, you know, that uh, Navdak is, you know, reporting strange deaths, illness, hospitalization mm -hmm. because of uh, expired fake or poisonous substances. So who unveils body one camera for security agencies. Sounds like a great initiative there. COVID-19, Nigeria gets $15 million grant for safe school reopening. And FG proposes to spend 396 billion naira on COVID-19 vaccination. Outrage trails customs plan to ban importation of vehicles above seven years. Ghana beats Nigeria. Others in 2020, May and June, uh, WSSCE. 70% of farmers in Ibarakpa, Hokyogu have abandoned their farms and that's according to the Alafi. The Alafi also accuses security agents of releasing suspected criminals and 81 monarchs reject proposed ranching for herdsmen in Ekiti State. Those are the stories on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune. Let's move now to the Daily Independent. Uh, the presidency says, we know Nigerians working with Boko Haram. Um, not the first time we're hearing something similar. Also, over 100 die from communal clashes, IPOB invasion in Akwaibom. Nigeria, or rather Naira, may not regain what it lost, says an uh, analyst. And also Olu of Wari Stool, why Prince Shola Emiko was disqualified. Anambra governorship, PDP rakes in 234 million Naira from 14 aspirants. And federal government blames non-submission of supplementary budget for military on service chiefs. We can also see here Lagos to roll out body cameras for law enforcement officers. And uh, we, one or two others, Umahi declares dusk to dawn curfew in a Boeing community as three policemen uh, killed as gunmen attack Professor Soludo. Also going over to the next newspaper at the Daily Independent. Naira may not regain what it lost. I beg your pardon on The Guardian. Shortage of COVID-19 vaccines sparks fears of fakery hoarding. Military opts for full force against terrorism and banditry. Gunmen kill eight, injure four in Kaduna. Gunmen attack Saludo, kill policemen. 
Ebony declares curfew as indigence to crime murder of kins. And the British envoy is lamenting Nigeria's worsening insecurity. The military delaying supplementary budgets for weapons procurement, says Minister Andoshibajo presides over FEC in Buhari's absence. All right, those are the big ones uh, this morning. We have our guest joining us, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyai Talk. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Nice to be with you. Thanks for joining us. So go ahead. Yeah, there's so much uh, that we've shared this morning. Uh, I'm not sure where you want to start yeah, from. Yeah, that's... From all the papers, um, one, two, three things stand out that's um, generic. And that's the level of insecurity in this country. Mm. And all sorts of things from um, the political season that has started in Anambra State, the Osoludo being attacked, to what is now new that is coming up in a Ibom State, that people give it all manner of coloration, that is something very terrible, something that, is, that really needs to be looked at very early because I'm here. And um, what, what the story is just not at all palatable. And then we now go into the COVID-19, you know, um, uh, controversies. And I heard your preliminary discussions concerning, um, you know, conspiracy theories and um, faith and all that. And I want to say that this COVID-19 matter is one of the most controversial things I have seen in my entire life since I was born, it is not just that the, the pandemic has ravaged the whole world, but it has become so controversial that even within World Bank, uh, did I say World Bank, WHO, you know, today they will say one thing, tomorrow they will say another thing. Then one country will say this vaccine is good. The next time they'll say, no, we don't need it again. Then they'll say, okay, bring it down. It's really confusing, really, really confusing. Um, some people, that um, have a little bit of reservation is not so much sometimes out of faith, but more out of reasoning. For instance, I'm asking myself, what right, why is that for me to do? I, I tend to think that I should do a lot of um, preventive, um, you know, actions. For instance, can I avoid anywhere I can afford to avoid going? Can I do my businesses online? Can I, what can I do to boost my immune system? Can I have as much exercise as possible? What are those things? What sort of food do I eat to boost my body immune system? And um, while watching, interrogating, and usually when a vaccine comes out, it usually has a certain period of testing and all those these have come out in a way that has been really fast. And at the same time, the way it's ravaging people, life is about taking, you know, I always talk about the three C's of life, the chances that come your way, the choices that you make, and the consequences of those choices that you make. And uh, we should try not to religialize this process because anything that comes to the level of faith People take it without thinking, including myself. Show me something in the Bible and trust me, I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to rationalize it. I'm not going to try to see whether it makes sense or not. I Just show it to me in the Bible. All I want is to see it, not you say. You just show me. John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world he gave. Anybody that believes, for me, once I believe, I mean, that settles it. So when you bring to the level of faith, it becomes uh, different from people. But when you want to give an opinion, a personal opinion, I think you should do this. You think you should do that. Uh, I think it's a different uh, uh, ball game altogether. Okay. All right. So on the, on, the, on the newspaper this morning, we saw a story about Lagos State Government and how Song Wulu wants to get body cameras for police officers. Do you think this might you know, go on to reduce the use of force, you know, by security officials, you know, on Nigerians. Not to talk about how expensive they are, you know, checked out the cost online you know, from about 400 to about $800 for just one. And we have thousands of police officers in the country. Maintenance also is a likely challenge as well as, you know, the proper storage of the footage. 
So just looking at all these issues, first of all, let's start with the intended aim. Might this reduce yes. the use of yes. force by security officials? You know, what's the cost of life? Relative to what this, you know, when some, I've said this on this program before, when Song Olu was to replace Ambode, I was one of those very unhappy. Very, very unhappy. Because Ambode is somebody I've known right from school. We attended the same school. We are almost the same uh, class. But I think it was a year ahead of me. And um, so for more reasons than one, I've known him. He's a very proactive person. I just didn't think much of Song Olu. I'll say that. But... Today, I think I'm becoming one of his greatest fans because he's proved me wrong in many areas. I commended his building um, um, uh, houses, houses for, for teachers. teachers. Fantastic. And today, he's introducing body cameras for his security. is something that this nation has to warm up to and buy. It's not about cost. I can tell you for, for a fact, when people, you know, crime is sweet when secrecy is available. The moment you know that every word you say, every action you take can be seen, so it's not going to be your word against another person's own, these people are going to be extremely polite, they are going to be extremely civil, and we're going to have a different kind of dialogue and interface and interaction between the citizens, and the law enforcement officers. So I want to commend the governor of Lagos State. And I want even we private sector people, I'll be willing to, 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 to contribute to that fund. I mean, and I would like to really think that something like that should be brought down to a quiet bomb here so that our people can start to enjoy a cordial relationship All between right. either the police or the forces and the citizens. I think that... Um, Mr. Right. Songwolu, we... Obong Songwolu, because we've made him Obong in my village already. He should be commended. Well, mm. I hope that we, of course, uh, will be able to look deeper into that in another, um, you know, another time, um, and of course, uh, see how you know this really would affect the level of security and, of course, uh, policing. Uh, here in Lagos and across Nigeria. But let's also talk about, you know, still security issues. The government says uh, that uh, they know Nigerians that are working with Boko Haram. Um, it's not the first time we've heard similar statements. For the longest time, Nigerians have asked that, you know, the sponsors of Boko Haram be revealed. You know, what are the government's findings with regards who is, you know, supporting or sponsoring the terrorist group? So once again, the, uh, the government is making these statements. Do you, uh, you know, does this in any way sound different or change anything? It just, it just upsets me. Nothing more than that. I should clap for them, right? They know the sponsors. They know the harm that is being done in this country. They know their prime responsibility. I could never quote this enough, and I will continue to quote it. Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B of our Constitution says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. The level of insecurity brought about life being ravaged and being destroyed on a daily basis. And you, government, what you are telling me is we know the sponsors. I mean, how, how ridiculous, how absurd... How absolutely mindless can I see such a statement? So what should I do as a citizen? I should clap for government that they know these people. They do not bring them to book. It is infuriating, to say the least. And I think that government should start to think and understand why they are there in the first place. They are not, they are not a gossip paper that wants to... Oh, uh, tell us, tell us, uh, go read more, you know, click, read more. You know, they're not trying to attract us to their page. They are supposed to be taking actions and giving us citizens the boldness, the confidence, the assurance and reassurance that we have our backs covered by the system. They are supposed to take such actions that will deter others from as much as thinking. 
just as far as I'm concerned, it's probably like deals. Look, we know you better come talk to us. We know you. We know you. We know you. Come see us. And they're like, oh, they say they know us. Who do they know? Who do they know? Let's look at negotiate. Let's talk. For goodness sake, I, I think that our government need to start thinking more of government for what it is and how important the next most important institution after God is government. And then you are given that responsibility of being God on earth and you are using that to trivialize it. It's not okay and we should not take it lightly. Okay. Um, this, when, when, when a citizen, when a citizen, Dr. Mayla Fia, made that statement, they, live, they harassed the living daylight out of that man. And now the presidency is saying, I think they should start by apologizing to Dr. Mayla Fia. Well, okay. well, good thing we're going to be speaking with him sometime this morning, so uh, hopefully he might bring it up. Uh, so um, the Lekki and SARS protests, it's not something that we can forget in a hurry. And uh, months after that October 20th event, where we've seen doctors come out to say they treated people, a cable news network report reported by CNN you know, mentioned this. We saw a report from Amnesty International who claimed that 10 people were killed. Pictures, videos online of people bleeding and, you know, people, you know, conducting burials for family members who they say died during the protests. Families who say their, you know, children who went out to protest have not returned till now. So all these things exist. But there's a report by the United States that was published March 30th, two days ago. And it says that it conducted investigations into this matter and that it could not verify the claim that soldiers had killed NSAS protesters. I don't know where this leaves us now, Mr. Yedok. I, if you notice, I was um, like um, speaking and all that because my, my laptop was uh, playing games. Or the, the voices were like, oh, I think that the ones who talk of, uh, talk of US is the report that could not find evidence that um, there was any. I find that extremely curious of the US in particular because I, I believe they have sophisticated intelligence. And I'm not sure that I want to really speak much on that because um, I find it extremely. Um, curious, that's the word, that their findings should come at that um, conclusion. Knowing what we saw, knowing this, even during the tribunal, the hospital that came and gave so much evidence of the number of people that were rushed in, I don't believe that these were done by, by the testers who have been extremely sick over the years, even in the face of publication. So where did all those come from? It's something that um, I think uh, it leaves me confused. If you know another person, I would have said, but we tend to have some level of um, confidence in the intel of, of, um, of the U.S. in particular. So when they come up with this uh, plan B, I really don't know where it's going from. So I think I'll leave that at that. Okay. Mr. Yaito, right. just quickly before, before we wrap up, there's, a, you know, the National uh, Association of Resident Doctors NAD. Today is April 1st, Thursday. They're supposed to be back on a strike today. Uh, we'll get clarity on if that's going to still hold later on the breakfast. But there's a report here from the University College Hospital Ibadan where patients are grappling with water scarcity and reduction in surgeries. Taking you know, a look at this report is just very heartbreaking because patients have to queue for water, patients have to queue to use the toilet, and just dilapidation of infrastructure that should be basic for an organization or a, a, a healthcare facility for that matter. So let's bring you in on what you think regarding you know, the state of healthcare uh, facilities in Nigeria, you know, government hospitals, in fact, and, you know, tying, it, tying this to the strike, the proposed strike that should commence today because doctors are, you know, suffering from poor welfare. Thank you. Um, two things. The first is um, resident doctors going on strike. 
It's curious that while doctors gave a, a warning that they were going to go and strike, Mr. President gave a notice that he was going to go on medical tourism. I don't understand my president. Make a talk through because this one don't pass me. Definitely, they were not understand. Garuba Shehu said that, oh, no, no, he's not ill. He's very fit right now. He's just going on routine medical checkup. Really? At a time like this, when we are ravaged from all ends and our medical practitioners are going on strike, Mr. President, fit as a fiddle, is going on routine checks in a different country. Well, you'll be reading the news that people have gone on strike and then people are dying. I don't know how to appeal to our resident doctors. I've looked at the budget for health. I really can't understand what's going on here. I've seen the amount that we are budgeting to buy vaccines to give a certain level of protection against our health. And I'm asking, between that protection, which is that global offer, and the welfare of these people who are the frontline health workers, what are prioritizing like? What are priority scale like? I just want to be told what makes sense. Number two, water. I have always said that any government that does not make water number one priority. Without water, there's no health. All this one, we are talking about pandemic, pandemic, 20 have died, 10 have died. Make cholera enter town. Maybe we see the number of people go come out. Whether they come out or delete. I think that we need to re-engage, re-interrogate our leadership profiling criteria. We need to re-educate citizens on what government is all about, what governance is all about, the imperatives, the, 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 the fundamentals of government and governance. I think that the elite, I don't know how many of us really understand what government is all about. We are toying with the destiny of a nation. That's why we're having all sorts of things going up and down. What's our health policy like? How can water not be made a first line charge to have a policy that every single community in this country Every community must have portable water as state policy. All right. Water is life. And then we now have a hospital where people are lining up to get water. It's not okay. It's not okay. All right. Um, you know, as a girl, you know, I talk. I don't know um, what else to say. As always, we enjoy your analysis and your thoughts on uh, the major stories every morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. Uh, we're now going to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you what happened today on the 1st of April, many, many years ago. I'm going back to the year 1984. And, of course, uh, telling you about a singer who has put out, you know, one of, you know, the most popular songs, you know, in, in history, yeah. Sexual Healing. We'll tell I'm you about going that. back to 2004, the beginning of the Gmail. Do stay with us.